This review is of Reed Instruments R4500 SD Hotwire Anemometer Kit, which comes with the uh, 16 gigabyte micro SD card with adapter, as well as 110 pow uh, volt power supply. Um, you can also get 220 volts if that's what you're running on in your country. Um, and it comes with a hard case, batteries, and of course the temperature probe and the meter. So um, it's it measures air velocity only uh, in feet per minute, meters per second, kilometers per hour, miles per hour, and knots and air temperature. Now, I, it, it's probably uh, ambient air temperature. It has two separate probes. One is the hot wire, the other one is a thermistor to measure the temperature of the air. <clears throat> They're both on the, the probe. It has data hold and minimum and maximum functions as well as sampling from one to 3600 seconds, uh, I think per minute. Uh, sorry, one to 3600 seconds. Yeah, sorry, per second. One to 3,600 samples per second. Ah, sorry. And um, it's got a one-year warranty. So I'm not even going to bother to put this in. I don't need this. I'm not going to use this either. I'm just going to do this with the um, batteries. All right, so it comes with this nice hard case for use in the field, which isn't useful to me because I'm only doing, using this for testing computer fans, but it has a manual in multiple languages and it's got this protective foam on it. It's also got the probe and you can transfer data from this unit to your com your device, your computer or whatever, to like uh, a spreadsheet. And you would need the RS-232 output cable in order to do that. In other words, you have to have a rather specialized uh, cable, so you'd need to get RS-232 to some kind of USB 3 uh, cable. Uh, so, and I'm not even sure if what the maximum transfer rate is for RS-232 cables. Also, if you use the um, power supply, you'll be able to plug that in right there. Otherwise, that just stays closed up. Accessing the rear, um, or rather, more specifically, the battery compartment, you use a small screwdriver to open up these two, and then you would need six uh, AA batteries. You can also set it up so that it is uh, easier for you to use. Let me just get rid of the case here. Since it's nothing but in the way, as is the box. So you can, unfortunately, it tends to flop around. It doesn't, it doesn't have a um, thing that holds the stand open, so you have to do that with your fingers. Um, also, if you want to mount it on a tripod, you can do that. And um, I believe that's the serial number. All right. Now, as far as using this is concerned, um, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's a little bit frustrating. Okay, so, I'm going to be using this Phobia Nano G12 uh, 120mm PWM silent 1500 RPM uh, fan with uh, red LED that can be turned on and off to test the, um, the probe. And as you can see, there's the thermistor that uh, checks the temperature. And when you want to actually use the hot wire part of it. It's a little bit difficult to get it um, open, but there it is right there. Let me try to get that focused. Okay. There you go. Now you can see it much more clearly. And so when you're not using this, make sure that you keep that closed, but otherwise you're going to want it open all the way. So it's not blocking the thermistor or the hot wire. And this does extend, uh, I don't remember specifically how um, long the probe is. Hold on. Okay, so here are the specifications for this product. It does also come with a place where you can plug in a Type K or Type J temperature probe. It does not come with that. And I don't understand what Type K and Type J temperature probes are. Um, the, oh, the telescoping probe goes up to from 280 to 940 millimeters, which is going to be great if you're testing um, HVACs. 
for my purposes it's absolutely not necessary and one of the downfalls of it doing it that way is this super long cable here slows down data transmission from the probe to the meter resulting in you don't get real-time results you get a, a delay of a few seconds but um, it's easy enough to plug it into the top of the device just have to match it up and there's the holes for the type uh, f and type j temperature probes and there's really nothing else other than that there for the sd card now when you want to use it obviously you're going to start by pushing the uh, button for power and that turns on the L, um, the light the backlight and then it counts down from 10 to 0 so it takes that long to presumably to calibrate uh, but I'm not really sure why it takes so long and you'll notice it's already got a reading of 0 0.41 and that is not temperature the temperature is here this is something else and I don't know what it is but it's very frustrating because as you may have noticed when I showed this, there is a reset thing right here in the middle between the other two. I reset it a couple of times and it made absolutely no difference. So there's no, uh, no wind going through and I'll demonstrate by closing it that even with this closed, it does drop, but it doesn't show zero, which makes no sense whatsoever. This should be sensitive enough, to, sensitive enough to register that the device is closed and thus there's no airflow. So something is miscalibrated. And this is the way it came for um, when I first checked it out uh, last weekend uh, after I got it. It was like that. It was around 35. Um, so when you open it up, then it gets worse. So it's very, very frustrating uh, right off the bat. Also frustrating is, is if you want to use these functions, since they've gone cheap and only put in five um, buttons, you are forced to do long presses. So if you want to turn off the backlight, or turn it off, that is, sorry. If you want to turn it off, you have to do a long press. If you want to turn off the backlight, that's the short press. So that's not a big deal. Um, I think it's easier to read that way. And then if you want to change the, the function or use hold, you have to do long press. And since I don't have the temperature probes, that doesn't help. And I've got it on hold while it's calibrating or whatever the heck it's doing. Should be calibrating, but still not showing zeros. Um, so we can, short press does hold. And we can record the data that's going to be sent to the device, which will be saved on the SD card. And you can change the um, settings for time and date by using this. And you can use this for logging the, um, the information. I'm going to turn that off. Again, a long press. So it's kind of frustrating. So um, I'm gonna plug in my fan now, and we can see what kind of a reading we're gonna get off of this. I'm not gonna vary the fan speed any. Um, just want to show you that it does actually register it. Now I, I plugged this fan into a fan controller, and it suggested that the fans maximum rpms was up to 1630 um but the maximum is supposed to be around 1500 so i think that that was not accurate so as you can see now it is running i've got a short cable here so i can't I'm gonna have to move everything over and get the meter in here Oh, I wish I had a cameraman. Now, there is, there is a, uh, whoops, touching that, sorry. There is a direction of airflow that you're supposed to do, and it's on this side, there's that dot, that's the side where the air is supposed to be going in. And you can see that it's doing, 
it fine at measuring this at five point okay it's going up stop that let's get a little bit closer and see just how fast this can go this works on the principle of heat so the wire is being heated up and as it's being heated up darn it sorry about that um, as it's being heated up the uh, device keeps track of how much effort is being put into keeping it warm i'm not sure what the temperature would actually be or why it shows or if that's the reason why it shows that there is air movement when it's closed but um the uh, maximum airflow, which is not the same as the velocity, which is what this is measuring, is supposed to be 64.3 uh, cubic feet per minute. And there's, I'm sure, a way to convert that mathematically, but I don't know the, the formula, and it's not really relevant at this point anyways. Um, so you can see that it actually does work. I'm going to turn off the fan. Ow. Just a second. All right, so here's my, here are my thoughts on this device. First of all, even when you buy a kit, um, I believe even the more expensive kit, because there's this one was like, I got this one on sale and also used a discount code to get it down to the, the, the kit, I mean, the, um, everything I showed you. Uh, plus the uh, power supply, I believe, was separate um, for about three hundred and fifty dollars, I think it was. And, nor and normally it can be like three hundred, I think three hundred eighty or something like that. And all you're really getting, in addition to the meter, the batteries, the K, and the, I think you get the probe, is also the. Um, the SD card, I think. But you, you can look at radiusinstruments.com and look it up yourself. But anyways, um, I found it irritating that I had to order the power supply and that there was no option for a, a non-telescoping uh, hot wire probe. Also, of course, that it's not calibrated uh, from the factory, so it doesn't give me a proper readout. So I'm going to have to alter all, any results that I get by whatever that mistake happens to be at the time that I'm testing, which it, it doesn't you know, really instill confidence in me. And um, the delay caused by this long cable that is not a high-speed cable is, to me, unacceptable. Maybe for somebody doing HVAC testing, they don't care, but I care um, because I'm looking for real-time information um, that will help me to evaluate um, computer fans. And then finally, having to long press. They could have just spent more money and added long presses on here and airflow because um, there's really no excuse for a product that, I, you know, compared to the Bonvoisin I tested and the Protmax that I tested, this is like uh, 350 bucks or so, and yet it only does velocity. It doesn't even do airflow, but the, but the other two did. Now, granted, also the Protmax also did ambient temperature, dew point temperature, and one other temperature as well as humidity. Did a lot more. It was not terribly accurate, but it had a lot of functions. Why is this so stingy on functions? What is the reason for it? So I'm, I'm really not satisfied with this. Um, and I guess if you don't care about the problems that I've experienced with this product, um, you know, you might want to spend $350 on it, but for me personally, I'm not going to recommend it. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.